The Second World War is associated not only with bloody battles on the fronts, but also with incredible levels of cruelty and inhumanity of punitive actions against the civilian population of the occupied areas. But while condemning Nazi crimes, today many do not remember what happened in the territories of the former Yugoslavia, especially in Serbian's lands, where cruelty, sadism, and outright bloodthirstiness overshadowed even the most terrible crimes of the Nazis. After the German troops entered Croatia on April 10, 1941, the establishment of the independent state of Croatia, NDH, was announced on the same day. From that moment on, a real hell began for Serbs, Jews, Gypsies and all persons of non-Aryan origin in the occupied territories. The first mass punitive action was carried out on April 28, when more than 200 civilians were killed by Ustasha nationalists in Serbian Gudovac. About 8,000 people lived in the village, of which at least 3,000 were Serbs. Before the occupation, there was no conflict between local Croats and Serbs, neither on the basis of religion – Serbs are Orthodox – and Croats are Catholics, nor on the basis of inter-ethnic relations. Around the same time, a terrible way was agreed upon to clear Croatian lands of Serbs. It was decided that a third of the territory should be destroyed a third converted to Catholicism, with the so-called conversion of the population to Croats, and the rest should be sent to Serbia. The punitive action itself began on April 27, when the most respected and well-known residents of Serbian nationality were arrested. About 500 people were sent to concentration camps, and the remaining 192 people were taken out of the village and forced to dig a hole. After that, all the detainees were shot, and the wounded were stabbed with bayonets. It is noteworthy that even the Wehrmacht command was outraged by this action. All the executioners were detained, and two days later even a special German commission came to the village and exhumed the bodies. However, all the detainees were soon released after the intervention of the NDH government. Feeling their complete impunity, the Croatian nationalists boldly continued their bloody path. This massacre was the beginning of a mass genocide. As Sima Surkovic, a Serbian historian, later wrote, In the first month of being in power, the Ustasha government committed mass murders throughout the country, and especially in Croatia and Herzegovina. Serbs were driven to the concentration camps, where they were executed throughout the war, along with Jews, Gypsies and Croats, who opposed the regime. The violence that was committed against non-Croats took truly outrageous proportions. Those who were sent to concentration camps, no matter how cynical it may sound, were lucky to some extent, because the death that awaited them could be quick. More than terrible things awaited those who were captured by the Eustachia right on the streets and in the houses. For example, Croatian soldiers practiced sexual atrocities which a normal person simply cannot comprehend. When a Croat raped a Serbian girl, the second held her unfortunate child over her head. And when the rapist approached the culmination of his action, he gave a sign to his comrade, who began to cut the child. The poor child screamed in terrible pain, and the mother, seeing the torment of her baby, also began to scream in hysterics, which led to convulsions, as a result of which the muscles of the whole body contracted and the executioner received his satisfaction. Captured resistant fighters were treated by the Eustache just as terribly. They were tied by their hair to tree branches, and then their feet were cut off. This way, the prisoners died slowly and painfully, bleeding out. Among the Eustachia, there were even special detachments that were exclusively engaged in the processing of prisoners. Those who were not hung from trees faced an equally terrible death. They were purposely beaten so as to break every bone, and then either their heads were cut off, or they were bayoneted or thrown into the river. A soldier who fought in the Yugoslav resistance and miraculously managed to survive the Croatian captivity spoke about the horrors of the Eustache genocide after the war. I have never seen people being abused like that. Serb women were brought to prison for exchange. And believe it or not, they led them into the next cell to me. And then Croatian soldiers pounced on these Serbs women. It was so terrible. It lasted the whole night. There were screams until the morning. The soldiers were kneeing like horses, and the women were screaming. Among the Eustache, it was fashionable to wear necklaces from the cut-off parts of the bodies of the massacred Serbs, Jews, and Gypsies. 
Cases have been documented when beads made of fingers and eyes hung on the necks of the executioners, and some wore necklaces of cut-off tongues on their belts. But the most terrible was, of course, the Jasonovac concentration camp. To date, historians have not determined how many were killed there. According to the most conservative estimates, not less than half a million people. But today, Serbian historians insist that at least 700,000 citizens were executed and tortured in the camp, of which about half were Serbs, at least 200,000 were Jews, the rest were gypsies, resistant fighters, and those Croats who opposed the regime. What happened in the camp outraged even the Germans. Even the head of the SS Himmler repeatedly made it clear that the genocide of the Serbian population should be stopped. However, in terms of the execution of Jews and gypsies, Himmler was quite tolerant. So the Ustasha, paying no attention to anything, continued the systematic execution of the whole population. In the camps, things were really outrageous. After the furnace was built, the prisoners began to be cremated, and very often they burned people who were still alive. The executioners simply beat them on the head with hammers and then threw the unfortunates into the fire. It should be noted that even the most notorious executioners of Nazi concentration camps usually cremated only corpses. Moreover, it was the Eustache who carried out the most massive gassing of prisoners in the history of mankind. In one day, at least 1,300 people were killed in the camp in the gas chamber. It is not surprising that even many SS officers of the Nazi Germany, having been in the Jasonovac concentration camp, fainted. They had never seen such atrocities. In the camp, to increase the speed of executions, the so-called Serb cutters were used. Knives, specially made by the company Sologen, were attached to a leather mitten. With such a device, the Eustache walked past a row of standing prisoners, cutting their throats. Fights between relatives were a wild tradition in the camp. The Eustache brought parents and children together on purpose, arranging crazy games. For example, they forced the father and son to fight to the death, or the father to kill his son, or vice versa. Sons were forced to rape their mothers and sisters. Men had their organs cut off and put in the mouths of their wives and children. The level of torture and its variety many times exceeded the most terrible torment in the Nazi concentration camps. At any rate, the Germans did not put a hungry rat on the stomach of the prisoners and cover it up. As a result, a brutal animal gnawed through the body of the unfortunate man. The prisoners of the camp had their bones broken and their limbs cut off, their tongues pulled out and their eyes gouged out. The naked were doused in the cold and thrown into the barracks, where the unfortunate died of forcebite. What they did with women and girls is simply impossible to describe. In addition to the cruelest violence, they were maimed, the breasts were cut off, their stomachs were torn open. The executioners were especially fond of beheading, and for this the Eustache used not only axes and sabers, but also saws. A condemned person experienced incredible torment in the last minutes of their life, and this only amused the executioners. During mass actions to exterminate the Serbian population, the Eustache sent bloody parcels toward Belgrade. Parts of the bodies of the Serbs, sometimes heads, were tied to the boards and signs like for the market were placed. The infamous Belgrade Zagreb railway is still called the road of death today. The prisoners who worked on its construction carried clay either in heads or even in their handfuls. Exhausted by hard labor and abuse, many fell onto the embankment. They still alive were cold-bloodedly walled up by the Eustache guards with the same clay into the embankment. According to some estimates, the bodies of at least 10,000 people rest there. The list of torture and atrocities committed by the Eustaches is so vast and brutal that many things even today cannot be shown or voiced. However, German's officer expressed their indignation almost immediately after the creation of the NDH. So the German general Edmund Glees Horstenau reported to the High Command on July 10, 1941. I'm often told that the German occupying troops must eventually intervene in the atrocities of the Eustache. It might happen one day. How other citizens of Yugoslavia treated the Eustache can only be judged by one fact. At the end of the war, when many Croatian executioners fled to Austria, the Yugoslav partisans crossed the border of the country in 1945 and killed everyone they managed to catch. 
This act of retaliation in history was called the Bleiburg Repatriation.